So, quick recap. You get your kit, you see your piston, you make sure the oil rings groove isn't overlapping. If it is, you need to install the rod with the uh, piston pin as well, and then start building your way down to up. So the oil rings, and then the second uh, compression ring, and then the first one, and then you'll be set. If it's not the case, like in my case, obviously it's not overlapping, I can do this and I can install the rings as well without having to put the rods. I will do that. I will put the rods just because it's easier to, to handle instead of holding the piston that way. I'll be able to grab it with the rod here. So for the sake of the, of the demonstration, the rod would be here. I'd be able to hold it that way instead of holding it from the piston. It would be way easier to handle as well. Just for showing you and just working on the piston as well. So you have figured out if the oil rings are uh, overlapping the piston pin. If it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. Just make sure you adapt yourself and you prepare yourself to do the steps correctly. Then second thing to do, you make sure you're gonna put every single ring in the piston and you're gonna label them for first one, first, uh, first cylinder, second, third, fourth, and fifth in my case. Uh, thirdly, you need to make sure uh, that you, you either have writing, so your, your top and second compression rings are marked. If they are not, you follow the guide, you're gonna follow the instructions as well. If they are, you're gonna do that as well. And then uh, it comes the time to gap them. For the gapping, like I told you, there's a small, there's small mats to do. It's very, very easy to do. Uh, but do not, do not underestimate this this step. It is very important. Now on to the gapping of the piston rings. Okay. Now first step is you're gonna pick your top or second compression ring, whatever you want to start with. I'm going to start with the top one. I'm going to also make sure uh, that the lining is facing top. And then you're going to insert them a little bit that way and then turn them slowly so you can adjust it that way. You're going to make sure it doesn't snap or anything. You're going to do that. And then you're going to see it's not even. So I'm going to take the camera and show you guys. So if I were to measure it, look, you can see here the gap is almost flush and then here it's not, it's a bit deeper here if you look, there you go. <coughs> it's very important to make it, uh, uh, to make it as flush as possible on both sides all over. So, so the best thing to do is use the actual piston there's tools for that but to be honest unless you're a performance shop or you have a big shop and you keep rebuilding engines it's not something i'd advise you to buy just reuse the pistons so what you're gonna do in my case i i use the the oil expander um, groove the last one the, so the one closest to the bottom of the pistons i use that one so i can measure everything so you're gonna make sure you're gonna put it in here and go down slowly until it's even on all sides all around and then once it is you're gonna take your filler gauge and there's a small very small groove here over there and to make sure that is it is uh, the proper gap so in my case uh, so in my case uh, for the top compression ring, I need a 0 .0, uh, for a 0 0.0147, so I'm going to go with a 0 0.015 since it's the closest one whenever you round it up. And I'm going to do that for all the top compression rings on all five of the cylinders. So I have 0, 0, 0, 0015 here, so you want it to be a snug fit. So you see, I don't know if you sit in the, there you go. Here. so it's supposed to be snug you do not want it to be too snug and then you're like chipping a bit of the piston ring you want it to be snug enough where there's a small force applied and then it just holds itself here 
and you do not want it to be too loose either. Um, whenever you're gapping the pistons, it's very, very important to take your time. It's better for it to take 20, 30 minutes additionally and have it done perfectly than gapping them too big and then having to buy another set and then wait to have them delivered and etc. It's just more delays and more money to be spent. I'm also going to be doing the uh, the second compression ring so making sure the bevel is from the outside and then the writing also on the top a little bit there you go smaller the grooves use the piston it's flush all the way around so in my case I need a uh, 0.018 so that's what I'm gonna put with the filler gauge. Oh, oops, sorry. Do that, and then there you go. It's a snug fit, it's not loose, it's just perfect. Okay, so don't mind the dirty table, it's dried resin. Um, so uh, in my case, I completely forgot to, uh, to record like a small time lapse or something of me gapping the rings. But let's say, in most of the cases, the manufacturer is going to give you some room to pl not play with, but more, of a, more room to adjust yourself. So, so let's say you get the rings, right? They're that way. You have the opening here. In many cases, it's going to overlap. It's going to be a bit bigger. So whenever you're going to put it in the cylinder, the gap won't be that way. It, it's going to be overlapping. So in that case, you're going to need to gap it, obviously. And it was the case with me. So what you're gonna need So what you're gonna need is the piston ring filer. So you have electric uh, electric ones, you have manual ones. In my case, I'm not building uh, 10 race engines a week. I'm just doing my personal projects. I only have that one. It's a manual one. It's very cheap. It's from Amazon as well. So you're gonna make sure they're bolted down so it's not moving anywhere. Whenever it is, you're gonna take your piston ring, I'm gonna show you, and you have these guides here, the small guide. So I'm gonna make sure, so there's some reflections. Let me see what I can do. Maybe if I lower the, there you go, okay. So you have the opening, you're going to use the marking up and still up. And whenever you're going to sand it, you want it to be towards the bottom. So you do not want the burrs and the small splines to go up towards the, the top side where the, the, the marking is here. So you're going to go down. So whenever you're doing this, you're going to do that motion here. And let's say you inverse it that way, you're going to go towards the other side so it really depends it's a qu question of perspective how you're putting it on the machine and here the important thing is to make sure it is completely square you're gonna use the ring here the small guide and then you're gonna start um, turning that slowly very slowly and do not apply cra crazy pressure on it either it's very easy to chip it or even bend it or just take too much material out of it so take your time it's a it's a small step and a big step at the same time it's a it doesn't it, it takes a lot of time but it doesn't take much to ruin the whole step so please take your time and do it right once so now for that step whenever we're installing the piston rings it's very important to follow the steps perfectly to the dot so you can see that here, that way, is the piston pin center line, which means the piston pin will be that way. And then it tells you that the engine front would be here, which means the first cylinder would be that way, so engine front. So in our case, the, the intake valves would be here, exhaust valves over here. So if we position them properly, there you go, that way. So it would mean that I would have, if I follow this properly, so the bottom oil rail uh, piston ring would be over here, 
the top one would be over here the oil ring expander gap would be over here if you check for the compression rings so the second one would be over here and the top one over there so follow this properly and correctly uh, everything uh, about the oil rail rings and uh, etc they're really easy uh, to just install with your hand just be careful they're extremely fragile very easy to vent very easy to chip uh, you take your time put them properly and then they don't really move that way but uh, when it comes to the compression rings they really move a lot so make sure to install them take your time put the second one as well and then you reposition them and then put the piston ring compressor as well One extremely important step is to not forget that the riding on each compression ring needs to be towards the top of the piston, which means whenever we're installing them here, the riding would be facing that way and not that way here. Very important step and make sure, like I told you the last time, whenever we're regapping uh, the, uh, the piston rings, make them parallel, they won't be crooked and make sure to deburr them as well take out all of the sharp edges if you do not have the tool for it use a very fine grit of sandpaper and just go slightly with your hands very very slight passes it's better to take your time take more time do more passes than do it too quickly and take too much material out and then need to buy another set so all five cylinders and all five piston rings set are perfectly gapped so the top one is 0.015 and the second one is 0.018 that I'm pers personally using uh, so since that is done uh, it's gonna be the end of today's episode I want to take the time to thank you guys for supporting me thank you for the likes and the comments and the, also the DMs that you guys send me it's really appreciated and like I told you it's a small step and a big step at the same time take your time if you have any questions any uncertainty feel free to text me dm me whatever it is uh, i'm here to help you guys so thank you i'll see you in the next episode where we're gonna put the pistons and the connecting rods together and we're gonna put them in the engine fully assembled with the crankshaft thank you and bye bye